Hi, this is Tutor from Uplats, and uh, this is 13th session of Salesforce Learning. And uh, if you want to know more about Uplats, you can always log on to uplats.com or can contact Uplats by the mentioned email and phone number on this slide. In today's module, uh, we will be talking about validation rules and rule of sum. So validation rules. Validation rules helps enforces on data quality and also meets your business requirements. For example, a student cannot be less than 16 years of age to join a course in a university. So when one of the users uh, is creating a record in Salesforce, creating a student record in Salesforce, and he enters uh, age of a student uh, which is lesser, which is less than 16 years, then error should be thrown. Those records should not be saved. Uh, while creating a new record and editing an existing one, validation rules can check values across multiple fields and ensures it meets the criteria before the record is saved. If formulate uh, returns false, you can, you can define a validation rule, error condition formula, and error message. We will do, that in, we will do the same in a few minutes. The error message is displayed at the top of the page or below a specific field. Error is displayed at the top of the page or bottom of the page if you are calculating values across multiple fields and users has to correct more than one field. Error condition formula can be a list of fields, operators, and functions. Once all errors are fixed and validation rules returns as false, the record is saved. You can define multiple validation rules and all rules should return as false validation rules are not applied if the record is created using quick creation option okay now let's see it's time to see the things in action and we'll go to our login.salesforce i have my username password i hit the login button Okay, so to, to create any field, uh, we will go to object manager. And then uh, we need to create this on student. Click on a student object here and uh, for validation rules, we will click this validation rules option here at the left. Click this new button to create a validation rule. Okay, so this might be familiar uh, to you because in our previous module, we have worked on formula fields where we have added a if condition. When that condition is true, we want to display uh, one, one, one string. And if it's not true, then we will uh, we will display a second string. So the formula field, it, it is like a formula field, but we we write one condition here in this in this text box. Uh, we will write one condition. If that condition is true, then validation rule will fire the, and, and the record won't be saved. For example, before we write a validation rule, uh, let's give it a name, um, test uh, validation, test validation. I'm giving it a name. Test validation description, uh, what is for, or the, uh, this checkbox. If this checkbox is not checked, then this validation rule won't work. So right now we will write here true. Our condition uh, is true. It is returning true. So we'll check syntax. No errors found. And here at the error message, we will say um, a validation rule fired. Okay, so now we will. We'll, see the error at the top of the page no now it's time to save the trigger now see these things in action because in formula field uh, things were uh, same we have like all the functions and math functions available so validation is like a formula field but the only uh, the only thing is uh, we uh, we are checking a condition if it is true it will display an error if it's not true then uh, then record will be saved simple as that so i quickly go to this app launcher here um search for student
okay so i clicked on this record dexter i edited it save validation rule fire see so our condition we are in our condition i have mentioned true so every time i hit edit and save it will every time I, I try to edit or, or uh, insert a new record in the student object uh, that validation rule will fire and we won't be able to see see this now let's now let's edit this uh, on a meaningful condition so here our condition is che um, check student age there are uh, functions uh, plenty of functions available you can um you can click on the function and you will see the definition the purpose of this that function is and uh, you can click this help on this function to know more about this function you can try another conditions but as of now uh, we will uh, be uh, we will check the age of a student so to check that uh, we insert a field we have a age field okay so if age is uh, less than 16 when age is less than 16 then this condition will be true and it will show an error message student age should be more than more than 16 okay earlier we chose this option top of the page we, so here the error was coming if i edited added this record again i haven't saved the validation rule so it will fire the previously saved so here uh, we have got the error at the top so if we want to see if we want uh, if we want that error to be displayed on a particular field then we can choose this option field and then we will choose this age okay so every we can click this save button here Now it's time to test the same. Okay, so I'll just give a quick refresh. It is active, our error condition is age should, it, if age is less than 16. Okay, so currently the age of this record is 20, so I'll make it 14 and click the save button. Okay, student age should be more than 16. That does make sense. So student is 17. Now hit the save button okay we are good to save this so to impose the quality data we use validation rules there can be a lot of complex things currently we are checking one field but in in real time in real project we may be checking four or five fields or six seven as per the requirement so as uh, so this example is to understand what validation rule is and and the functionality of validation rules so this is pretty much validation rule so you can you can try uh, you can think about different scenarios and you can uh, explore more of functions by clicking on them and you'll see their definitions and you can try creating more validation rules so um, next thing is a roll up summary fields so if you remember uh, in our early modules when we were discussing about the data types uh, we left a few of the data types to be discussed on our later modules so we have discussed about a roll up summary field we have discussed about a formula fields and now the roll up summary is remained roll up summary fields helps in calculating values of fields on a detail object and it is saved in parent or master object the objects have to be in a master detail relationship example in student app we can have a roll up summary field to count the number of subjects to check if students has passed or failed we can also have a field to calculate the total marks to check scores across subjects. You can use sum, count, min, and max functions in case of sum types field. In case of sum type fields, you can use number, currency, and person. Min, max, date, and date time fields are available in number, currency, and person. Be caution if you are using multi currency opportunities and having a roll up account, check advanced currency management, and it is related to impact on using roll up summary. Now you can ignore this point. We can discuss this when, uh, when we talk about the multi currency in Salesforce. So, roll up summary fields are not displayed on the edit lay layouts because these are the read only fields. We cannot manually edit the values in, in roll up summary, just like formula fields.
Okay, so now let's see roll up summary in action. Uh, to do that, we will go to. Okay, so to create a roll up summary, we are already on object manager. So we will click fields and relationship here. We, we click new and and we have roll up summary option available. So the first condition is to create roll up summary. We can create a roll up summary field on an object. Uh, uh, where it is a master detail uh, it has a master detail relationship and it is a master object not not the child object so for a for a quick example if i click on this object manager i search for student marks object um, object manager again student grades i'm sorry student grades click on student grades um, fields and relationships um i click on this new so now here roll up summary is grayed out i cannot create roll up summary field here because uh, it is sharing a, ro a master detail relationship with uh, uh with the student object but it is not uh, the parent object so if, uh, if we have a i so if I click on this information thing, then we have the reason why this is grayed out. You can create this type of field on this object because it is not the master in master detail relationship. Okay, so hope this makes sense. So, okay, so here in, a, uh, in our student object, uh, we have, um, um, before I directly jump into, let's see this. Okay, so here for one record, there can be multiple student activity junction and student grades record. So multiple student grades can, uh, one student grade object cannot have multiple student objects, but on the other hand, one student can have multiple records of student grades. So, so this student is the master object and these are the, these are the child object. Okay, so we can always create roll up summary on the master object. We, okay, now we click on roll up summary, hit the next button. Okay, so I just, we first we click create total marks, total marks. Next, then, okay, then uh, here of summarized object, we will choose one of the child objects. So currently we have seen here, student has two child objects. One is student activity junction and another one is student grades. So we will click on student grades and we have below options. If we want to count the number of child objects, then we can use count and as the name signifies sum, min and max. Oh, so this time, this time our scenario is um, suppose uh, there are uh, currently we have one uh, record here. So, uh, but in real time, uh, if we see one student uh, at least have four or five subjects. So in all of the four and five uh, subjects, um, he have uh, uh, marks obtained and total marks. So we'll aggregate uh, all the total marks of, of the child uh, child records. We will we will we will do the example as well, but uh, as of now, let's say sum. And here uh, we will choose a number field, which is total marks. Okay, so the, the, here we have a filter criteria. We will come come into the filter criteria in a few minutes. But as of now, we will aggregate all the total mark all the uh, we will aggregate the total marks value. Whatever the value on total marks, it will be aggregated and displayed on the master object because master will be one. So I clicked on next. Then same profile options we have next, then the student layout. Um, again, I click save and new. So second object, uh, again, it will be a roll up summary. Click next. Here, marks obtained. We create a total marks, then it we, we create marks obtained. Next, I choose the object. We have some marks obtained. 
next uh, we have profiles then layout uh, let's save and do a quick test okay so currently we have okay i just go back to student okay currently we have one record created student grades let's create couple more records um first sem subject uh, let's say c++ marks obtained um 70 total marks are 100 save and new um, semester we have first sem again uh, subject we have digital electronics marks obtained are like 95 total marks are 100 hit the save button and then we have uh, then we have three records okay so now uh, we will go to the details here i just do a quick refresh to see those uh, fields that we have just created now currently not visible i'll, I'll give, refresh it again to see the changes if okay for my total marks and marks obtained okay so we, we can and see this record here now so i'll edit edit it and save it back again okay so uh, currently the total marks are coming as 300 because uh, we have three records created and uh, and total marks are 300 in all three objects in all three records sorry so go back to student again so marks obtained we have 231 so we can calculate can open all three on next tab okay so we have 66 then 70 plus 95 equals to 231 so so we need not to manually uh, calculate the total marks and marks obtained it will be auto calculated and when i hit uh, this edit button so uh, these are the read only fields so i cannot manually add the values these will automatically roll up and come here on the master master object so we create a couple more roll up summary fields so now uh, we need number of past subject and number of failed subject to do that again i'll just quickly close this mm, new and then again we will choose a roll up summary click on next here number of past subject next um student grades only records meeting certain criteria we need to count the records when when the certain criteria meet we will count because as of now if it it will count it will count number of uh, records created in student grades the result would be 3 so here um we have created three records where the status is is uh, status is passed uh, not not failed on any of them so suppose if any one of them is failed so we here uh, we need to create a one field here which will uh, show number of past subject to two um so we will i click on only records meeting certain certain calculation okay field uh, i'm gonna choose a result from the student grades if result equals to true um click on next we have profile options click on next again student layout uh, we click save and new so we need to calculate now number of failed subject as well again roll up summary we click on next number of failed subjects we click on next we need to count um, I'll choose the student grades object. We will count the number of records, only records meeting certain criteria. 
result if result equals to false. Okay, so before I save it, I need to check uh, if result is our if result is a, we created a string field actually. So here result is not true actually. It should be pass or fail. Okay, so I'll instead of false, I'll change it to fail. Uh, I click on next. I click on next again, save, and uh, I'm sorry, I need to update uh, the field that we have just created right before this one, number of edit. So here we have, so I quickly edit this record as well. Instead of 66, I give uh, 45 and click on save. Result will be fail. We'll go back to so instead of true, uh, we need to pass here. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now we are uh, now we are done. Here details. I just added this record. Number of failed subject is showing as one. Number of passed subject showing as two. I hit the save button again. These are not visible yet because we have just created. I give a quick refresh. Okay, so number of fast subject two, number of failed subjects one. So if we create another record on student grades, uh, I click on new here. Um, semester as one, marks obtained as 87 out of 100. Subject, I'm gonna choose um, database, save here. Okay, so now at the details, um, we need to do a quick refresh to see the changes. Okay, so total marks changed uh, and marks obtained also changed. Number of fast subject changed three and failed, we have one. So if I go back to related records again, I edit one of them. Instead of 70, I make it 34, hit the save. Again, go to details, uh, do a quick refresh to see the changes. Okay, so now number of fast subjects are two, number of failed subjects are two. So roll up summary as uh, one of the basic things when we need automation. Um, so in case of in, in the business logic or in the automation, we have um, covered two things as of now. One is uh, uh, formula field, then other one is uh, this uh, rule up summary field. And um, we have already, uh, we have also covered the validation rule uh, to, to make sure users are entering quality data. So you can, you can think of more scenarios and you can try to achieve those scenarios uh, with using formula fields or validation rules and and these roll up summary fields but remember roll up summary field can be created only when uh, the relationship between the object is master detail in case of lookup we won't be able to do that so till the time keep practicing thank you so much